Here at the Dungeon Master's Apprentice, we work on creating The Cursed, a unique campaign world and advice on how to have a great gaming session at the table. Today, let's talk about making your combats faster and more deadly. Tell me if this sounds familiar. Your party has decided to attack a large group of kobolds. Now the mage, cleric, and rogue are down. Only the fighter, in his nearly impenetrable plate mail and shield, is still standing. He has been swinging his long sword for minutes now, but due to the really bad rolls on both sides, the fight is a stalemate. At this point, the dungeon master and all the players are getting frustrated and a little bored as well. Let alone the fact that anything resembling realism was long ago ran for the door. Yes, I know this is a fantasy world, but it is grounded in reality. It has to be, or it will more resemble a drug-induced hallucination. Players need to be able to believe in the world to become immersed in it. Now, I am absolutely not advocating for the use of an ultra-realistic combat system. I've played in groups that use these types of systems, and they all seem to fail in the same way. First, they slow the game way down. I'm here to play an RPG, not a combat simulation, and I wanted to take more than one action an hour. Second, because they are so close to reality, lots of PCs die because of lucky rolls by the Dungeon Master. I remember one game where I'm a mid-level thief, and he was killed outright by one thrust of a wild boar's tusks, right through my character's neck. Sure, it was an amazing roll, and really bad luck for my character, but the death felt arbitrary and capricious. It felt like I had no hand in my character's death. It wasn't because I made a bad choice. The wild boar was a low-level animal, and we were a party of mid-level characters. I had full hit points right before the fatal blow, so I wasn't pushing my luck. My PC was the victim of cruel fate. Sadly, that happens in the real world, but I don't want it in my games. Shut up, Fern. That was a long time ago, and I'm a much better DM now. And your militant mage died in a heroic death. He should have realized that he ran faster than his dwarf allies. What I do want in my games is the feel of realism without the capricious hand of fate. I want high-level fights to be epic with lots of blows exchanged, with great magics at play and heroic deeds in the mix. Yet, I also want low-level fights to be quick and dirty. I want numbers to matter. Remember, Quantity has a quality all its own. The best way I've found to get the results I desire is to add a timer. No, I'm not talking about a physical timer like an hourglass, but a metaphysical timer. Professor Dungeon Master over at the channel Dungeon Craft has an excellent video about metaphysical timers I think you should watch next. In a nutshell, a game timer limits things in the game. For example, if the players are trying to rescue an NPC that will be killed in four combat rounds, then the players have a timer limiting how long they have to accomplish their mission. So what is this simple change that makes low-level combat faster and more deadly? Adds a touch of realism, realistically makes the numbers of opponents important, yet keeps mid-level characters from dying capriciously and still allows for epic high-level battles? Like I said previously, we add a timer in the form of automatic damage per round. Why? Because hit points are an abstract concept, representing the PC's life force, health, endurance, luck, and the sort of aura that seems to surround main protagonists and antagonists in fictional stories. To implement this timer, just have every attack, hit or miss, do one point of fatigue damage, with one exception. The character cannot lose their last hit point to a fatigue point damage on the same turn they lost any other fatigue damage. So, if a fighter was fighting three kobolds and had only three hit points remaining and every kobold missed, the fighter would end the round with one hit point. The PC would not take that last fatigue point because he had already suffered two other fatigue point damage and the third would place him at zero. Let's look at each point I raised earlier and see how well this system fits the bill. Makes low-level combat faster and deadlier? Well, let's take a closer look at that first level fighter fighting three kobolds. Let's see he has 10 hit points left. So essentially, he has a timer of four or five rounds maximum, depending on initiative, before he hits negative points. If in the first round he puts one kobold in the negative hit points, then he has essentially extended his timer a bit. Adds just a touch of realism. In the standard rules, with bad rolls, this combat could literally go on forever. And this is not only unbelievable, but boring. With this timer, the player really feels that the fight is dangerous, just like real life, 
and will seek any advantage to overcome his opponents. Realistically makes the number of opponents important. If this fighter was sworn by 10 kobolds, it would have been an impossible fight, just like we expect that fight to go in real life. This is why PCs travel in packs. There really is strength in numbers. Keeps mid-level characters from dying capriciously. A mid-level fighter should be able to handle 10 kobolds in a straight up fight, but not without damage. This is why you bring along a party of PCs along with you. If a fighter had a ranger and a thief to help, those 10 kobolds would fall very quickly. This also works for the benefit of the PCs when a party is attacking a single large foe. So don't think this somehow punishes the PCs. Still allows for epic high level battle. Once the levels get high enough, a point per opponent per round of combat is almost meaningless. So the combats will retain their epic feel. But no matter what level the characters are, taking on an entire army is not only realistically impossible, but with the timer added, it is also impossible in the game. I hope you enjoyed on how to make combat faster and more deadly. If you did, please hit the like button, and of course any suggestions you have would be appreciated, so don't forget to leave a comment. I hope you come back for the next installments where I continue fleshing out my campaign world and discuss other dungeon mastery related topics. If you enjoyed this journey with me, then please consider subscribing to this channel. If you do, don't forget to click the bell icon to get notified every time new content is posted. Until then, adventure on!